Everyone, two months have passed since UNA first reported for fall camp back in August. This weekend, they finally got their shot at playing a real game during a shortened season. So let's take you out to Lynchburg, Virginia. Blake Deaver actually started the game for UNA, but he did not return after receiving stitches from a hard hit in the first quarter. Now, UNA's Parker Driggers in the Wildcat. He will uh, go up the middle, but then he is stripped and fumbles. Liberty's Emmanuel Jackson picks up the loose ball for the Flames. They would cash in on that UNA turnover as Chris Ferguson throws the quick out to Demario Douglas for a short TD. Liberty up seven to nothing. Later on, Rhett fouls. He will step back to pass and he throws the little pump fake and throws it deep down the middle and he's got a man. It's Andre Little on the go route. It's a bit underthrown, but Little will just makes the big catch for a big game. Now the Lions knocking on the door. Files looks around, but it, instead he throws an interception across the middle. Anthony Butler will pick him off not once but twice on the entire day. Liberty led seven to nothing at the half. Let's go to the second half now. Liberty starting to pull away as you know. Unfortunately, that's how minimum, momentum goes. Ferguson throws it up to DJ Stubbs. He comes down with a touchdown reception, 14 to nothing Flames. Now, UNA did finish this game on a good note. Despite being down 28 to nothing, KJ Smith picks off of this Jonathan Bennett pass and returns it 13 yards to set them up in scoring position. That would lead to this. Parker Driggers making it right up the middle for the Wildcat score. Touchdown right there, everybody. Let's check out your final score from this one as Liberty goes Goes on to beat UNA by final of 28 to 7. UNA takes on Jacksonville State at Brawley Stadium in about two weeks. John Gross in the Jacksonville State Gamecocks kicking off 2020 against Florida State. Gamecocks strike first. Tate Rotomaker is intercepted by Jack State's Colby Fuque. He takes it back 13 yards for a pick six. Jacksonville State goes up 7-0. Here's more from the Gamecocks. Josh Samuel hits the corner and finds Pater from 20 yards out. 14-0 now Jacksonville State. The Gamecocks continue to roll. Zarek Cooper launches a deep shot down the field and it's caught by Logan McVary. That sets up this play. Two-yard QB sneak by Cooper. JSU leads 21-7 at that point. Second half now, Florida State makes a furious comeback. LaDamian Webb right up the gut, avoids a defender with a spin, and ties the ball game up with this touchdown. We're tied now 21-21. Later, Florida State takes the lead for good. Lawrence to a Philly with the 13-yard touchdown run. Final score, Florida State wins this one 41-24 over the Gamecocks. All right, ladies, so our FCS teams finally getting a chance to play on yesterday. UNA and Jacksonville State, unfortunately, did not start the season off with victory, but we did learn a lot from both squads. For UNA, I'll say this. Of course, attrition definitely played into this or whatever. They had their opportunities. They had their chances early on, but turnovers led to Liberty's touchdowns. But you did see those guys never quit, especially with the interception at the end of the game, which led to the first scoring opportunity. But Jacksonville State... Man, I don't know what the heck happened. I mean, Coach Gross and them had a huge lead on Florida State, and then Florida State found a way to chip back in at the end of the game to, you know, to pick up a victory over Jacksonville State or whatever. I'll say this. I guarantee you John Gross probably was not happy with the L, but he was probably excited about the effort. What do y'all think? I agree. Uh, the JSU-FSU game was definitely one I wasn't expecting either. I was really impressed and really excited to see the outcome of that game. Unfortunately, it's not what they wanted, but there is a lot of optimistic things that they can look at from that game and take away from it and just kind of build on that because if you're able to play with a team like FSU, which again, FSU isn't, you know, the best of the best, but they are the next level. They're ACC. So, I mean, that's a big team that they they really competed against, I think, yesterday, and that's not what I was expecting. As far as UNA goes, though, They've had a lot of injuries and a lot of sicknesses related to COVID this summer slash fall. They True. haven't had as much preparation as they probably should have had by this point in the season. So I think that that's really been playing a role. And the fact that Deaver was taken out in that first quarter or whatever definitely didn't help them under any circumstances. So first game of the season, not the best outcome. Hopefully they can do better the next game, but it happens. So they've got nothing to play for at the end of this season anyway. They're just trying to figure out the dynamic of this team. So we'll, we'll just see where that takes them. Yeah, and Kayla, like you said, with JSU, I feel like Coach Gross, he has to be proud of the way that his team at least 
came out there and really kind of stuck with FSU. I don't think anybody really kind of saw that coming. Like you said, there are good, a lot of good things that he can take, they can take away from that game and learn and improve on. And kind of the same with UNA. I felt like they did pretty good job first going into halftime. I believe it was seven to zero, and them sticking with with Liberty was really good. And I think Coach said after the game, we now know what we need to improve on. Getting into their first game of the season, having that first game of the season, that's when you can really see how well you're matching up against your opponents. And so for them, I feel like this was a really great test, and now they know what they need to do, and they have a couple of weeks now to get ready for their next game. Absolutely. Now, Jacksonville State is actually going to play their only home game of the season next week against Mercer, while UNA, they have a bye week, and then they'll take on Jacksonville State in a huge game out there in the shows. And don't worry, WCX Sports team will be all over that contest going into it.